best way to enter a control, is it? No, it isn't. But... You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing home. So this is um, Grand Harbour Marina. We've got to do something with the port please. That's right, we've got to no, check into this country. And then we're going to go for a restaurant with pizza and pasta. So after being towed into Malta at midnight, we realised that we were on the most expensive dock in Malta. So we really had to leave quickly. There's a boat oh, washing. Oh, that's a beautiful boat. Yeah. Meta, isn't that nice? Yeah, look at these amazing, I mean, honestly, who that's owns this boat? That's Barry's boat, Yeah, Derek likes that one. Wow, look, there's a super yacht, it's a super <laughs> Maramu. It was a race against time to sort things out. We had to um, bleed the fuel lines, we had to fill up with fuel, and we had to check into customs. Just been to pick up some fuel, some random guy from the dock took us up to the um, petrol station to pick up some diesel um, and then he dropped me off the bank to get some cash and I came out of the bank and now he's disappeared. Um, so I have no idea what's going on. I've been waiting here for about 15 minutes now. He was supposed to just turn around and pick me up again. The thing is I need to get back to the boat and fix the engine because we're getting charged to be on that dock. And it's a very expensive dock as well. It's a very busy place, Malta. There's a lot of work going on here. A lot of foreign workers as well, so I think the economy must be doing pretty well. Before Craig left, we made sure that he fulfilled his big dream to travel on a Maltese gondola. I always wanted to come on one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and in the by the evening, we were already heading round to Crete Marina. So this is the uh, like the normal side, and then on the other side. It's Modern At 75 euros, Crete Marina is one of the cheapest in Valletta, but at least we had a couple of families next door to us. As we'd arrived from a different country, there was a bit of paperwork to fill in. That's the Department of Health, um, just to see if we're nice and healthy and if you have any pets. Oh, okay. No, just three hungry children. Jack here is just removing the turbo because we think we've got problems and uh, some of the bolts have managed to shear off. We were lucky to get Jack's number. Jack's a really good engineer based in Malta. So we have removed the exhaust mixer. Two bolts have broken inside the turbo. They haven't been removed for a long, long time. And now we are planning to do some maintenance. <laughs> We basically found that the turbocharger seized up and it was heavily corroded inside and we removed it to uh, see what we can do. Basically not a lot, probably changing, but let's hope for the best. The man who likes his good cup of tea. It's a good cup of tea, yes. We get sponsorship from Yorkshire Tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in Hugo's van and Hugo is the man who's just um, basically repairing our outboard because it wasn't working and uh, all the way here he's just going to be a, a barking for not looking after it properly even though it's a 20 year old motor and I've only had it eight months and it's been out of the water most of the time um, apparently it's had a lot of abuse so uh, taking me back to his workshop now so we can take a look at it and he can tell me what um, repairs he's done and what I need to do to look after it but he's, uh, he's a bit of a character he doesn't speak much English but he certainly knows how to swear a lot when we got the engine I, I thought it was a four stroke so I haven't been putting any oil in it so uh, I've got to pay for that as well. Hugo's just over in the garage, he's, he's getting some uh, two stroke oil now for me and uh, he's telling me he's going to get the proper stuff so that um, so I need to keep on buying the, uh, the proper two stroke oil. It's a workshop. 
Ik weet het niet. Ja. Nou, dat is goed. Ik ga deze one uit. Ja. Leef de training. Aha. Uh -huh. Als je een fresh water en de leef de training. Tel het stop, de engine. So when you run it again after two months, three months, you just put the petrol in here. Yeah. Pump the petrol and starts normally. So run it dry, then store yes, it. Yes, run, yes, run some yes. fresh water Because through. Because you don't leave any petrol in the carburetor. There, why? Because the, the petrol it drains, it goes away. Yep. But the oil you have mixed with the petrol stays in the carburetor, it comes like varnish, and you have to take the carburetor out to clean it and things like that. Yeah. All right? Okay. I've made the joint somewhere here. I have to call the, all the way, so I have to I have to them off. All right? And this, not, not like that. Yeah. It's just first hold, take the loose, and then start. Yeah. Always the engine must be slow speed to shift the gear. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. So replace these gaskets here. Just gaskets and they, they can follow well. And the... And the wrong spark plugs are in as well. Spark plugs, yes. Yeah. An exercise in my fingers so I can do my writing. So it's quite a minus 8y right over here. And are we done simplifying? Well, no, there's a little bit more that we can do. We can't add the 21y to the negative 35 or the negative 20. The color means that both cells have the particular organism. The purple color means that only the plant cell has the organism. <laughs> neighbors they're French and they have four French girls but not only that they had eight ducks and a pet dog called Fix and the children absolutely loved hanging out with them all French neighbours were also setting sail soon, so they were looking for a home for these ducks that they rescued themselves. There was a duck sanctuary that we found in Malta. I am Joseph. Welcome, you have some ducks here, a nice place. I show you the places on the on the on the TV, on the on the anyway, on the picture. When he wants to put them in here, welcome. Okay? Okay. I wait you to give me the ducks here. All right. 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 And um, we thought that might work, but um, actually, the French family wanted somewhere where it wasn't so busy, and um, in the end, they found a really nice, quiet home. We knew that Malta is a city steeped in history, so we couldn't miss a day of exploring. So we're in Valletta, which is the capital of Malta, and um, we've been learning a bit about the history. And here, George V actually gave um, the Maltese people the George Cross for their heroism. So this is the War Museum at the fort at St Elmo. The original George Cross given to Malta. Wow, look.
when is that World War what? Third uh, two. World War two. And have you got any family that might be here at the time? Oh yeah, and there was um, one of my great great uncles who um, flew and um, he went missing. They're in Malta. Malta, Valletta. Valletta. Yeah. And this is the war memorial, isn't it? Yeah, all the missing airmen. All the missing airmen, yeah. Loads from the Royal Air Force, Com Canadian. Air Force and, yeah, Commonwealth. All the Commonwealth countries. Yeah. Yeah. Who was McLevy? On a Sunderland flying boat, he was a navigator. He was a navigator. He always wanted to be a pilot, but he was slightly colour blind, so he was a relegated uh, navigator. Wow. Uh, went missing around about Christmas time, 1941. He was in Egypt, he left Egypt to go and just survey what was going out at sea and he yeah. never came back. Never came back. No, the whole crew was missing. chocolate till he was 10 years old but when he did turn 10 there was a shortage of chocolate because everybody was eating it so much where are we uh, what country are we in we're Malta Malta yeah and um this is the backdrop behind us where our boat is moored near here. And uh, wait, we're going to turn around because this is the party. Yay, look at everybody. So we are next to a lovely family and they are leaving soon. And this is their leaving party, but we are going to see them again, aren't we? Right, now I'm going to do that round. Yay! So we spent the day trying to fix the engine. Um, feeling really demoralised, the fact that uh, the rigging's not right, the engine's not right. And then we got invited to a leaving party, a dog party. And there's, there's lovely Italian people and Japanese people, and people from all over the world. Crazy Italian photography DJ. You got high and low within within oh, yeah. hours. It's a um, mixed life. You're very expressive today, would you? Yeah. Well. I'd... What's that? It's emotionally expressive juice. <laughs> I feel happy. Why? Because we're having lots of fun and we get lots of food. While living on a boat, you're always moving on, so you don't really have a community around you. But we realise that th there is a boat community, but it's, it's a different kind of community with no borders. And you meet each other again and again in different countries and places. So it was also great to meet some old friends from Lefkas and they joined us for the party. In the morning, we found a nice spot to start the day with some yoga. We had to wait a couple of weeks for spare parts and also say goodbye to Lisa, who was returning to England. She was our other crew and we decided to check out the beaches before she went. Okay, so we've had a lovely day on the beach and it's the last day for Lisa, who's our crew member, um, but she's got to fly back to Brighton tonight. So we thought, yeah, let's go to the beach, but then we can wait for about an hour and a half for the bus because there's so many people who have the same idea. And um, so we're on the bus, amazingly, we kind of like pleaded to get on. But now we're kind of wondering whether it's gonna get up these hills because there's so many people. Um, I think Lisa's going to make it to the airport. She might not be showered, but um, <laughs> that's no different, is it? <laughs> In the last five days. Let's see. I'm not panicking yet. <laughs> it's almost as slow as our boats. 
eventually the engine part turned up so we had that fixed in and then tested so basically this is a turbo that we've put the new one it's a direct replacement and we are installing the exhaust turbo exhaust mixer now we're going on sea trials now after installing a new turbo and a new exhaust elbow what are we now, expecting um, half an hour should be enough okay. as long as we reach the uh, normal running temperature and a little bit more than that we see what the cooling system is doing and how the engine is performing hopefully we're getting uh, a little bit more than 3500 4200 something like that on load and we don't see a lot of smoke Start, start the top of oh, I know how you do it. 15, 8 times 2 is... We also had a visit from two members of the Ocean Cruising Club and they um, gave us a little tip off and said that we could get on some boys around the corner in Schlema Bay. This is the port of Valletta and we're leaving Schlema Bay. We were on two boys which was quite tricky to get off because they weren't slipping because the, there was rusty old loops and the line wasn't slipping through and the wind was on our beam so it's a little bit heated let's say <laughs> so we're heading to blue lagoon which is between um the island of malta and gozo just above that's our new crew once we left for letter though it really was time to explore malta and gozo so off we went So we've just come in and it's a really busy place and there's loads of people on shore but the water looks very nice and blue so we're excited to swim. I'm doing school in Blue Lagoon. But this is Blue Lagoon. We kind of like this place. This is better this side than the other side because the tripper boats tend to go in the other side. The blue water here is really nice but swimming area is too crowded uh, so we're just jumping off the boat three two one go hi <laughs> so you're just jumping in and it's the first time we've taken this gopro underwater so it's fun His dad was in there too His brother and his sister Subaquatically askew The sea was getting stronger Did he know just what to do? Well, Arthur
which is on the north and um, this is like a, it's called Comino that's the island and that is Cominoto I think the tiny little island off Comino but it's really popular here Blue Lagoon because there's this lovely kind of very shallow area right in between so you're not allowed to anchor in there because it's all the swimming boys but um, it's really perfect spot and all the day trip boats have gone so now it's just the kind of people that are left on their boats that can stay all night really aren't we lucky so this guy um, who owns this boat over here, he's um, got this banana boat he wants to test out. So he's um, come over and see if we've got any kids on board. So obviously all our kids want to go and test it out. Um, so they're going to go and have a little ride in the banana boat. It needs some more air in it at the moment. It's it up. Yeah. It looks a bit floppy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> gone off with Thomas on sailing up Sarah.net and um, yeah they've just gone off <laughs> with some stuff I know he's a nice guy actually. Is where we are. Um, the kids are supposed to be schooling this morning but it was can we go to the beach before breakfast and before schooling so that's why we're here. We've collected some plastic rubbish as well which we're going to take over to the main bit over there. Aren't we good this morning? Right, this was um, Blue Lagoon. It's really well known. There's a lot of people that come here on day tripping boats and it w was really beautiful but it was quite busy in the daytime with all the big boats coming in, everyone coming in for the day. Um, it was lovely at night, there was hardly anyone here and the beach is all cleared, the beach all cleared up, there's only small beaches. But um, yeah, we kind of don't really want to do another day of that busyness, so we're going to try and find somewhere more quiet. So we're going to go to the main island of Gozo, which uh, might be a bit more peaceful, but um, I don't know if it was be as beautiful. Yesterday in schooling, we, we researched the jellyfish that we saw and we found out that they were very poisonous. Um, in the biscuits. It's worth me, it goes um, and it's really busy and my best thing is um, I can swim without my, I found out I can swim without my boat seat here and I um, snorkel there a lot of times and there's loads of rocks. Right, 
Right, so we've come to Glendy Bay and um, it's quite a small bay. Tricky isn't it, to navigate in because there's lots of rocks around that you can't see. The boats over there um, are quite small and because we're a little bit bigger, we've decided to um, come into this little cove and do shorelines. So we put the anchor down and we've tied a shoreline, but because the wind's changing direction, we might need to put more shorelines on, but we've got to try and find somewhere to tie onto because there's lots of rocks, as you can see, but um, there's not much to tie onto. It's a nice place though, this is where we are. So that's Woody over there, that's where the shoreline's tied onto, and because it's quite sharp he's put some rug, rags underneath it and now he's coming back. Yeah. Slendy Bay is um, on the island of Gozo which is just north of the main Malta island so we've gone from Malta to Comino which is the bit in the middle and now we're at the top on Gozo and there's no shops apart from one tiny little shop which we're going to go in and um, get our provisions but um, loads of restaurants around here I bet they do really well because there's no shops. Um, so maybe we might go in later, Grandad said he might treat us. But um, yeah, this is it really, Xilindy Bay. There's stuff you don't need but you want because there's so much of it and it's like, look, they've even got HP. Oil. Should we get some powder? Milk powder? I've forgotten what we came in for. What did we come in for? So this is Dwerger Bay or Fungus Bay and I thought it would be a good time to practice my new skills of cutting hair that Julie had taught me over the winter. Julie has taught me how to cut hair properly. Look up, look up, look up. It's not going so well. It was going better when Julie did it. Basically, he was more still and the boat wasn't rocking and I didn't get a chance to look at the video properly. So it's nowhere near as good but Anyway, that's life. <laughs> the boat's covered in hair. But the main reason for coming here was to find a tunnel that apparently goes through the cliff into a lagoon beyond. Thanks. He said 
he's been doing it for 35 years since he was a little boy, so he's probably used to it. But he said that it's the wind that comes through, I think comes out and funnels through. But he said it's a lot worse when it's really wavy. And today, it actually wasn't very choppy compared to what it could be like. <laughs> The rock formations are really interesting here and even our boat looked like it was kind of anchored in a volcanic crater. Sadly, it was time to head back to Valletta to refuel and, of course, squeeze in a few more repairs. So we are trying to rectify this fuel leak from the fuel pump. We've changed the, the electrician changed the uh, solenoid from an intermittent one to a continuous one. We have repaired the, we have repaired the fuel filter, which was leaking. Hopefully, we have addressed that leak as well. And now we do some tests after this. We stocked up on anti fouls for some jobs ahead of us. We just keep stocking up our boat with, with everything. But anyway, we do have um, a working outboard and a working engine now, which is good to know. And a proper rig check was definitely in order. to Tunisia in North Africa. Where are we off to then, Vincent? To Tunisia. Tunisia. To Monastia, which will take about a day and a half. So we've got another night passage tonight and then hopefully get there around about midday tomorrow. How's you doing? It's bad. It doesn't matter.
Yes. I can't really video. You can't video? Yeah, because you're in the way. Oh, okay, I'll move out the way. Sorry. Line slipped, line not slipped. Line in the water, line not in the water. Um, motor forwards, reverse, stop, neutral, all that sort of stuff. When mum says the communication wasn't very good, in other words, she means you're all screaming at each other and shouting at each other. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, really. Go. Right. That one. <laughs> 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 what Okay, so thank you for everybody for watching these videos and thank you for sharing them. Thanks especially to the patrons for um, helping us to get the equipment to create these videos, to edit and then produce them and also to get ice creams for the children to keep them out of the way so we've got time to um, create these video vlogs. Thanks a lot. And if you want to do it, do it. by your side home. Hey, you'll always be